So a group of artists, activists, and writers several decades ago chose to use the name of a popular athlete as a pseudonym for their actions. The idea was, I think, to turn this man's name and persona into a symbol that would be recognized by the like-minded, but to others would mean nothing, or nothing more than just an athlete whose name and face they've seen before. So members of this group wrote a novel at some point in time about a protagonist who was involved in violent uprisings, political and religious movements of different kinds, and various hoaxes that were meant to stir and incite the masses, something that we're all quite familiar with. In the last few years, last year specifically, many groups with their origins in online message boards, discussion platforms, meme sharing sites, and so on, uh, began for the first time for a lot of people's view, began showing up in real life, yeah, at rallies, protests, different kinds of events, carrying flags and signs, clothing uh, with the symbols and insignias and phrases that served as dog whistles to those interested and involved but to the rest of people seemed like nonsense or some sort of ironic meta joke uh, to the uninitiated. So it's possible, because many have done so, to see the thread from our previous, you know, four years let's say, of political um, strife they can see a thread between that reality and a novel written by a group of artists under the pen name of a soccer player. It's equally possible to write off any such connection between these two things as yet another absurd conspiracy theory. What I am personally interested in, however, and which my works are visual representations of, is the existence of the thread, not its validity or its truthfulness. So I chose to use the empty shelves of strip malls, department stores, and office parks as the settings for these paintings and drawings, because I see them as infrastructure built for a purpose that is reaching its end. And when the purpose ceases to exist, I am anxious to see what becomes of all that was created to prop it up and hold it together. This past year, I think, has sped up a process that was already moving along steadily, which is the expired use of these places and buildings. So what will they become? How long will it take for them to be destroyed? Or how long will it take before they have renewed value as a ruin from a vastly different time? So several decades ago again, uh, a cargo plane was shot down in Central America. And this event uh, exposed a nefarious conspiracy that had been unfolding for years and was having effects throughout the United States and throughout Central and South America and beyond. The plane that was destroyed was originally purchased as a set of two. Years later, the second plane was turned into a restaurant due to the infamy of its downed counterpart. The people, buildings, and events taking place in my work are the characters and objects from stories like this. The face of the pilot of the downed plane might turn up on a placard held at a rally, or his childhood home might be repositioned in the desolate parking lot of a dead strip mall. I'm mining these theories and narratives for their parts and repopulating depopulated places with these spare parts to create new narratives because for me it's a way to sift through the remnants and examine each place and each piece removed from the context of the story it belongs to originally. And in this way, I can think about how we assign meanings to things that are inherently meaningless, and not just meaning but images and words that become objects of devotion to such extreme levels that not only do they influence politics in the past nations take, but cause people to create theories and histories that are endlessly tangled and provide no resolutions whatsoever, only more and more and more questions and mystery.